Good evening, my fellow Americans. It was the generation that would never get old. That's right. That's the oldest thing in the White House. The baby boomers. <laughs> Honey, how can you possibly eat that? The me generation. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. There may be some instances, for example, color television, where we're ahead of you. Spin now and worry later. The new Ford Mustang. Later is here. This is a Nine Family Connection special. Blindsided, the reality of caring for aging parents. Hi, I'm WFTV's Marty Salt. The oldest of the baby boomers born between 1946 and 1964 turned 70 this year. We're at the edge of an elder care cliff and studies show the U.S. is not ready and closer to home, you are not ready. Research shows that adult children 30 years and older, many with children of their own, will be in the next few years juggling a job and assisting with the care of at least one older relative. And what you don't know about aging in America can be called aging shock. I felt that shock five years ago when my dad suffered a stroke. I have learned firsthand about the overwhelming cost of elder care and the job of caregiving. I'll be sharing several stories, including my own. But let's start with what you may not know about those costs. Some might say the costs are criminal, but they're all legal. It usually begins with a phone call. <coughs> Beth Ann Weiss is a perfect example of an adult child caring for two aging parents. Nice and cleaned up. Her mom is 85, her dad is 89. December 7th, 2011 was the date of the call that changed their lives. My father calls up in his lovely lingo that, his, that a cop was following him and, and basically said that he can't drive anymore. Manny and Elaine Rosenthal were married in 1957. He was a dentist, she was a homemaker. They raised three children, they had a financial planner, and they saved. Come a little closer, Mama. But that phone call was the beginning. That was a life changer for all of you, for everybody. Since that call, there have been falls, hip, elbow, wrist fractures, and dementia. The Rosenthal's have been forced into long-term care and their savings wiped out. Well, the first shock is, what do you mean Medicare is not gonna pay for this? Barbara Cohenson is an elder law attorney and has this conversation with adult children every day. Most families have no clue what the cost is gonna be. Here's how it works. Medicare is the health insurance program for people over 65. It pays for most doctor's visits, hospitalizations, and some rehab. Medicare does not pay anything toward long-term nursing home care. You pay until you run out of money. When you run out of money, you are eligible to apply for Medicaid, and approval is not guaranteed. AARP estimates 70% of people over 65 will need a form of long-term care at some point in their lives. And the average cost? A median cost is $91,000 a year. In this central Florida area, it runs about seven to $10,000 a month. A federal survey puts the average savings for those approaching retirement at $14,600. The median household income for Orlando is around $47,000. So why is nursing home care nearly twice that amount? And it's going up every year. The whole system is fraught, fraught with fraud. Congressman John Micah blames that red tape, mounds of paperwork, and zero transparency in medical charges for the crushing costs. He says Congress is trying to work the problem, but it's daunting. Did Obamacare address what we're no. talking about now? Uh, no. Long-term no. care, no. $91,000 no. a year. No. Didn't do a thing for no. that. And it Did it drive it, it, up it, the price? I think it drove up the it price. It didn't drive it down. The Affordable Care Act, passed six years ago, addressed basic health insurance, but not long-term care, and nothing's changed since. Many people think that Medicare will pay for a home health aid. Medicare does cover limited medical help and therapy following a hospitalization. But what if you need more? Gloria Gluskin, a licensed social worker and senior case manager, has to explain the reality to stunned adult children all the time. If you need uh, assistance with feeding or dressing or supervision or driving, that's private pay. Home health aides in Central Florida average $19 an hour. If an aide was needed 24-7, that would be $456 a day, more than $13,000 a month out of your pocket. During the, the most expensive months, what were you paying? Well, there were times we were paying one-on-one -on -one care for my father to be at the house, which is about $10,000 a month. And it's all gone now? It's almost all gone. 
Beth Ann's parents started with about $500,000. They had enough money, so we all thought. AARP projects one third of baby boomers will exhaust their life savings trying to pay for long-term care. You don't ever believe that all that money you've saved for all your lifetime is gonna go to an assistant living facility or a nursing home. What is the incentive to save if you're gonna get wiped out at the end anyway? Well, I think that, that again, uh, we, we see ourselves collapsing financially federally. That's a huge incentive right there. Coming up, can you protect your money? We'll tell you what you should be doing to plan. Then later, can you go out for the afternoon? Can people leave the house? No, absolutely not. What caregivers to parents now will tell other adult children about the job of caregiving. The hard truths adult children learn every day about ALFs and how they work. Welcome back to Blindsided, the reality of caring for aging parents, a Nine Family Connection special. There's a lot of money to be made from products and businesses marketed to Americans who are getting older. You've no doubt seen the ads on TV and items in the store. How many people may need a different kind of underwear? Over 65 million. The fastest growing household paper product in the U.S. is adult diapers. An aging population is not the only reason for that, but certainly a major reason. Already in Japan, the sale of adult diapers outpaces the sale of baby diapers. That's a trend that Bloomberg Financial says is likely to show up in the U.S. in 10 years. This has huge implications on American households and wallets. Licensed social worker and senior case manager Gloria Gluskin. There are new businesses every day with the oncoming tide of uh, middle-aged people now becoming what you would consider to be an elderly population. One senior place is a one-stop shopping mall for resources and help. Brochures for dozens of senior care businesses line the walls. <laughs> ALFs didn't even exist until the 1980s. Gradually, people were living longer, more women were working outside the home, and more families were moving. There are approximately 35 corporate ALFs between Orlando, Kissimmee, and Sanford. There are actually hundreds of small, unmarked mom-and-pop ALFs and adult family group homes in residential neighborhoods you wouldn't even notice. If you Google healthfinder.gov, the list for Orlando alone seems endless. But it's happening because there, you know, there are more people that, that are requiring this type of living arrangement. Here's a piece of information you cannot ignore. Medicare will not pay for assisted living. Elder law attorney Barbara Cohenson says this can be devastating news to adult children who are scrambling to arrange care for a parent. The real crisis is when people need to move into an assisted living facility and there's no money to pay for it. And what about military veterans? The fact is military service alone does not guarantee VA benefits. Right, well it's based on means testing, meaning that you have to be below a certain income and a certain asset level in order to become eligible. Assisted living is almost entirely private pay. Dave Lawrence lives in Winter Park. His 92-year-old mom lived in Michigan in the house where he grew up. A few weeks ago, she had a medical episode, couldn't go back home, and he got a crash course in ALFs and memory care facilities, which are more expensive. Shocking. Uh, the facility that my mom went into up in Michigan was pretty close to 7000 a month. According to Ginworth Financial, the average cost of an unfurnished assisted living residence in the Orlando area is more than $3,400 a month, almost $41,000 a year for one person. And for that, you generally get three meals a day, light housekeeping, activities, and the fact that someone is available 24-7 if you have an emergency. What the base price would not include is hands-on care. That's generally extra, and the extras are medication management, maybe assistance dressing, assistance with toileting. Those are all extra levels of care on top of the room and board. They can add another $100 to more than $1,000 a month to the bill, depending on how much extra help is needed. Many ALFs allow you to manage your own meds, and there's no charge. But if you can't, the cost for the ALF to manage medication could be several hundred more a month, and you'd need to use their pharmacy at their rates. So if you need the medication, for instance, that is now free at Walgreens, is mm -hmm. the assisted living facility going to give you that for free? Absolutely not. I mean, you got lisinopril that's free at Publix, but you're going through a pharmacy that's now charging you $50 a month.
Even if the cost was not a problem, assisted living is not for everyone. A resident must be able to assist in their own transfer from chair to bed or chair to commode, or hire a personal caregiver to help with those tasks. With the rising cost of assisted living, more families are looking at other options, including what's called aging in place. Been a lot of transitions, a lot of adjustments. Christy Self and her family remodeled her dad's house to accommodate his needs before moving in with him. Changes included replacing carpet with hardwood floors, lowering a kitchen countertop, grab bars in the bathroom. Um, we also widened the doorways here and in his bedroom and coming in the house. I-25. When Pilar I and Josh Sechrist realized Pilar's 77-year-old mother Maria could no longer live on her own, they decided to pool resources and have drawn up plans to build a house. We have everything on the first floor is handicap accessible, no tripping hazards, doors are wide enough. In fact, some new home builders like Lennar and the Providence Development near Davenport are offering multi-generational or next-gen floor plans as a way for families to accommodate what's often called the silver tsunami. Assisted living facilities, aging in place renovations, home health aids, all part of an emerging elder economy. Elder law is another. We introduced Barbara Cohenson, a member of the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys, earlier in our report. She's part of a growing legal specialty that didn't emerge until the late 1980s. People used to make a will and be done. What's changed? As they lived longer, they faced more health issues, and many times they didn't have the finances to carry them through their expected lifetimes. Wills, revocable trusts, irrevocable trusts, probate, powers of attorney, living wills, health surrogates, lengthy and often very complicated VA and Medicaid applications, all issues that can be navigated by an elder law attorney. Is there a way to protect money? There are legal strategies that we use to preserve those assets. But they can be very complex, too complex to explain here. However, one strategy that some people are pursuing is long-term care insurance. A lot of the, the adult children now are saying, listen, I don't want my children going through the same thing that I'm going through now. Insurance specialist Rob Cochran has written two books on the subject. He says long-term care insurance would help pay for care in the home, an ALF, a nursing home, even adult daycare. The cost? If you were just looking at traditional long-term care, um, they, somebody could maybe pay $1,500, $2,000 a year. Up until now, it's been all about the money, but there is a physical and emotional cost for the caregiver, usually the adult children. Coming up next, what family caregivers want other adult children to know. And I'll share a little about my own mom and dad. Welcome back to Blindsided, the reality of caring for aging parents, a Nine Family Connection special. More and more Americans will soon be providing care to some degree to at least one older relative. Those of us who are caregivers now can tell you that it's physically and emotionally stressful for a variety of reasons, including the fact that there are some things you just can't fix. Take a look at this. It is a powerful ad launched by AARP that seeks to capture the complicated emotions associated with caring for an elderly relative. It's appropriately titled, The Silent Scream. According to AARP, the average family caregiver is female, 49, works outside the home, and spends more than 20 hours a week caring for a parent. You don't realize after it does happen, how much more work it is. Pilar Sechrist fits that profile exactly. So what time is it? And she's part of the sandwich generation, taking care of at least nice one weekend. parent while she has kids of her own still at home. Her 77-year-old mother was a hospital volunteer until one day Pilar got a call. And they were telling me that she was losing her way. That was quite a shock. When Maria failed a driving evaluation and had to turn over her keys, it was then up to Pilar to make up for the loss of the car. The driving back and forth from my house to her house, it wasn't until she wasn't able to pay her bills that that's when she finally came to me and said, I need help. 
Now, after getting her two children to school each morning, Pilar drops off her mom at the Easter Seals Adult Daycare Program called Daybreak. Oh, 74. Maria's long-term care insurance policy she bought years ago pays the $62 a day, $1,200 a month cost. Pilar then drives to appointments in Orlando and beyond as an occupational therapist. Mid-afternoon, she runs her kids to their activities and picks up her mom at 5. Nights and weekends don't offer a break. Can you go out for the afternoon? Can people leave the house? No, absolutely not. Dave Lawrence's situation is different but common. He's here. His mom was in Michigan. He had tried to get her to move closer to him, especially after his dad passed away eight years ago. We had those, a lot of those conversations. And but where did they go? Uh, stubborn lady. <laughs> Dave was flying up twice a month to take care of her affairs. Finally, there was the call. It was the first time she had not really answered the phone. Suddenly, he was desperate. An only child and part of the minority of male caregivers, Dave was managing the crisis long distance until he could get on a flight to Detroit. Once there, he had just a couple of days to figure out where his mom would go when she left the hospital. Oh, it was a crash course in finding all this out along with the price. Dave eventually moved his mom to an assisted living facility close to him here, but he'll still need to deal with the house in Michigan. Remember, move your feet, turn your feet, turn your feet. Christy Self's dad, Bill, is confined to a wheelchair. After Christy's mom died several years ago, Christy and her family remodeled her parents' house to allow Bill to age in place. She estimates she sometimes spends 10 hours a week in doctor's offices plus travel time. She says it takes about an hour to help get her dad dressed and ready each morning. It really takes a team to take care of somebody full time. It's a real party, I'll tell you that. Beth Ann Weiss always tries to find the humor in situations, especially where it might be hard to find the humor. Before both parents went to long-term care, they lived on their own in a South Florida condo. Five years ago, did you ever imagine this is where it would go. Never did. My mother swore that she lived in paradise and no one's ever taking her out of there. Then her father lost his driving privileges, so it fell on Beth Ann to drive between Orlando and South Florida to help. We had to organize my parents' life. Beth Ann, like many adult children, keeps large files of all her parents' documents she's had to provide for Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and the VA, which still hasn't made a benefits decision in more than three years and there have been multiple medical situations to handle. I would say in the last uh, four and a half years, I moved my parents 23 times, including hospital visits, different nursing homes, different facilities, and now they're both in the same nursing home. That's where Beth Ann now visits her mom and dad almost every day. We said it usually begins with a phone call. My call came at 6.15 one morning in 2011. My mom said, something's wrong with dad. I rushed right over and the EMTs were already there. It was later determined he had suffered a major stroke. Only the day before, he had driven my mom to Publix. They went out to lunch, to the mall, and in an instant, the routine that my family and I had taken for granted was over. Well, you're all fixed up. You look, oh, yeah. You I'm look ready. good. Well, you do. You look good. Fixed. A lot's happened in the five years since. Visits to the ER in the middle of the night, running out the door just before a newscast, managing their affairs while driving down I-4, handling finances, medications, groceries, doctors, calls to supportive friends for help, moments of exasperation and exhaustion. Hey, Ma. But nothing millions of other adult children are not also doing every day and more. There are visits to my mom and dad during the work week between my sister, other family and friends, but typically on Saturdays, one of us picks up my mom to go see my dad, whose condition now requires long-term care. I brought you groceries. They got your coffee creamer. They had two for one at Publix. These are her medications for the week, and I, I fill them up every week, so there's something every day for Sunday, Monday through Saturday. I can get Saturday. up in the morning and take my pills and don't have to fool with the bottles. So my dad is in um, a nursing center about two miles away. Hey, good to see you. Hey, can you hang on to this a second? And I'll see you. We're going to roll, okay? Folsom Prison Blues, Dad. Yeah, I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bay. My mom and dad will soon celebrate their 69th anniversary. Any two people who have made it that far deserve the effort. Coming up next, the talk what adult children and their parents should be talking about now.
Welcome back to Blindsided, the reality of caring for aging parents, a Nine Family Connection special. So far, we've looked at the exorbitant financial costs and the dramatic life changes that can occur for adult children. Some things you cannot control, but some you can, and one of those is planning. It's almost like that taboo conversation you don't want to have your, with your kids about sex. No, no one wants to talk to their parents about what are your plans. Looking back, um, I wish I would have forced my parents into coming up with a, a plan. I think number one would be um, sit down and talk with your parents now while they're still well and find out what their wishes are. What is the biggest mistake that you see that families make? They don't plan. So somebody has to start talking about it. So uh, it may not be your parents, it may have to be you. The least planning is getting some documents in place that would give people that they trust the authority to act on their behalf in the event of incapacity. I think it's never too early to have the talk about the advanced directives <clears throat> because stroke can happen, car accidents can happen. Find out their medical, you know, what, what medications are they on, find out some things like that, um, where do they keep their financial papers. Many people coming in to pre-plan are people that are pre-planning at a point where maybe one spouse has just learned they have early onset of dementia. Um, so they feel like they still have time when really the planning should have started many, many years before that. It's the silver tsunami. It's coming. It's here. And if you don't start planning with it, you're going to get that crisis call. You're going to be unprepared. You may make decisions that are very unhelpful because you made them so rapidly. We discovered preparing this special many issues and concerns we couldn't tackle in one program. But we know that many of you have stories and suggestions and we would like for you to share them with us for possible use in future reports. Like Nine Family on Facebook to share your thoughts. Also, go to WFTV.com where you'll find a host of resources that may help you now. And finally, caregiving is manageable. Here's how you can start. Buy folders and organize information. Discuss seeking power of attorney. Mobilize a team that includes family and friends. Set up online accounts with permission. And update and organize your own information. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us.